We still have some big names on the NHL trade blocks. We're going to get the latest updates on the rumors surrounding guys like Evgeny Kuznetsov, Vladimir Tarasenko, and Christian Dvorak. Leafs forward Austin Matthews has had wrist surgery, will be out for a while, may miss the start of training camp. We have some more signings to discuss and an update on the NHL going to the Olympics. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have several things to talk about here tonight. Uh, first up, I want to talk about the latest updates concerning the NHL attending the Olympics and sending their players over. Now, we know that the NHL players were real keen on going and they negotiated with the league uh, to have it in the last CBA agreement that they could, have, they could have the option to go for the 2022 Olympics in Beijing. Now, there's been a lot of obstacles to overcome, a lot of hurdles. Um, obviously, that was all pending in agreement with the IOC. Uh, and right now, we're still at a standstill. We're way past the ideal time to have an agreement in place. I know one of the big things that they had um, difficulty getting lined up was insurance. Uh, obviously, NHL owners are concerned about players going over to play, contracting COVID, and being out of the lineup for an extending time or the effects from it. And it's understandable. you got to remember, like, as much as owners are sometimes come across as being really greedy and all that, these guys play for them. They're the ones that sign the paychecks, and you don't want your people getting sick and having a major impact on your team, thus having a big impact on your business. So that was a big concern. They had a hard time even finding an insurance provider. But that was uh, that part of the obstacle was overcome. But now it's going to be determined by, like, who's going to pay for it. That's the next stage that we're at right now. Um, right now, the NHLPA is looking for the IOC and the Olympic people to pay. And they have said no, that they're not going to. The league is not going to pay because uh, it's the players that want to go, not the league. So we're at a situation where the NHLPA, you're kind of being told, like, you guys might have to pay this if you want to go. They're still trying to negotiate with the IOC to work something out if they can. But it could turn out to be a major stumbling block. Now, I'm still optimistic and hopeful that we'll uh, hear that they'll, they figured out a way to make this happen. Uh, another, another concern I mentioned the other day was that there's word that uh, because of what we saw at the Summer Olympics that just took place in Tokyo, that the Olympics in Beijing are going to have a lot stricter protocols. And, you know, it might be really tough for the players to have to deal with. You know, being far away from home in a foreign country and dealing with all these testing and uh Protocols that they've dealt with over the last couple of years between the bubble and last year's NHL season. If hockey in the NHL this coming season is relatively normal, uh, which we don't completely know fully on yet, uh, you know, it might not be the most appealing as much as they want to go represent their country and try to play for a gold medal. There's a lot of other things to consider, and it's just not your ideal time in the world with everything where it's at with this pandemic. That it's, it's still far from a guarantee that we get NHL players heading over to the Olympics. So we'll see what, where things are at. But right now, that's, that's a pretty big stumbling block and a pretty substantial cost uh, that could you know, maybe be the downfall of it happening. I'm not I'm trying to be positive and optimistic that it does happen because I'd really love to see it. But it, it, that's where things stand right now. We'll have to wait for further updates. But it's a, kind of a big deal. Now, in other news here today, we also found out that Maple Leafs forward Austin Matthews was just reported uh, just a short time ago before I sat down to record here that he's had wrist surgery today. Now, we know Austin Matthews uh, was bothered by a wrist injury for a substantial part of last year, uh, off and on. Um, and you probably are asking, well, we're already like, you know, almost the middle of August. Why would he just have surgery now when they've been done playing for a while? Well, the, uh, the part of that is, is he didn't expect to need surgery uh, during the exit meetings when everything was kind of ending uh, they quite often do like medical updates and all that kind of stuff with the players. And it was believed that at that point that, you know, normal rest over the summer would be fine. But now that he's ramping up his training efforts, uh, you know, getting closer, you know, to training camp, he was running into issues and discomfort. And uh, after uh, consulting with specialists and least medical personnel, they've determined that surgery was the, uh, the, the best option to get it uh, fixed and, and get it uh, better for him. So uh, that puts him about a minimum of a six-week recovery. Now, six weeks puts him pretty much exactly to the start of training camp, but, of course, that was like the minimum. You don't know exactly how your body is going to respond uh, to a lot of these different surgeries. Everything doesn't work out perfectly. So you just don't know if everything goes really well and he recovers 
you know, at the very least uh, on par or slightly ahead of schedule. Maybe he won't miss any time in training camp, but it is possible that he could, given that the minimum time just squeaks him in under the wire here. So we'll have to see. Uh, I would imagine, though, that, you know, considering uh, Matthews being an elite-level athlete the way he is, if he does miss a little bit of training camp, I wouldn't suspect that's going to be all that detrimental to him. The good news is, is where it's a wrist injury, uh, it has nothing to do with his legs. He can still be doing other forms of exercise and cardio and things like that while he's recovering. So at least he can still, you know, keep himself as, as good a shape as he can. Um, and you know what? He might even be able to go to camp uh, as well. I'm not sure, depending on how they want to do things like here, he could at least be maybe skating on his own to keep up the, you know, that part of the training and just maybe not participate in drills for a little bit or something like that. So we'll have to see how things go. But certainly some surprising news to find out this late into the offseason that a guy, Matthews, here is, is having surgery. But that's the rationale what's going on behind it. And we'll see if that can correct his issue. And he can hopefully have a, a next season that's healthy. Because, I mean, he's one of the most elite goal scorers in the NHL, even with a wrist injury. Imagine if that was healthy, how much better he might be able to be. Now, we've also got some signings here today as well, uh, including a couple from the Seattle Kraken. They've signed a couple of players that needed new deals that were restricted free agents. they got Kale Fleury, who came over from the Montreal Canadiens, and uh, Carson Torinsky as well, who came over from the Flyers. They were both uh, RFAs. They both get one-year, two-way deals, 750K, uh, league minimum at the NHL level. Uh, so nothing too crazy or substantial there, uh, but a few extra signings because we talked a lot about uh, a lot of signings in the video uh, from this afternoon from earlier today. So if you missed that, you can link it here in the YouTube cards. All kinds of signings already discussed and analyzed, including Joe Thornton uh, going to the Florida Panthers uh, and some other stuff in there too. So certainly want to check that out if you haven't had a chance here already. The Buffalo Sabres also re-signed Casey Fitzgerald to a two-year, two-way deal as well. Same thing, uh, league minimum salary at the NHL level, 750 k now, when it comes to uh, some uh, free agents that are still out there, there is word, uh, just kind of a rumor, but still it looks like it might happen. The Winnipeg Jets, apparently, and Evgeny Sveshnikov, formerly of the Detroit Red Wings, apparently have mutual interest in maybe getting together on a contract. Looks like they're having discussions there. Uh, the Jets have a pretty full lineup, but at the same time, uh, they have a lot of players that are going to be on shorter-term deals, and they might need a guy like Sveshnikov, especially if they can sign him. For more than one year, too, I uh, could be, you know, between this year, see how it goes. Might be able to get a bigger role by next year. Hard to say, but certainly a player who has really, uh, you know, battled a ton of injuries in his young career. Of course, the brother to Andrei Sveshnikov, not quite as talented as his brother, but still a decent hockey player. Detroit kind of ran out of patience, I guess, with his development and all the injuries he's faced and uh, cut him loose. And we'll see if Winnipeg gives him a chance. I'm not sure 100% that's going to happen, but that is the latest uh, in the rumor mill on that situation as well. And I mentioned we also want to talk about the latest on some of the uh, the trade rumors or I guess uh, some updates here on some of the top names that are still out there waiting for a deal to take place. But before we do that, we do need to pause for a moment and acknowledge our channel sponsor, Manscaped. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Manscaped. Of course, with Manscaped, we have a special offer here for all Top Shelf Hockey viewers where you can get 20% off and free shipping on all orders at Manscaped.com. Now, of course, Manscaped just launched a brand new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is a fantastic product. They've taken the level up here even again with the skin safe replaceable blades. Uh, they have it's waterproof, it's wireless charging, uh, has a travel lock on it, uh, as well as a nice light so you don't miss what you're doing. So, certainly a terrific product. Now, many people associate Manscaped with their trimmers, which is certainly uh, kind of their top product, but they do have a lot of other great options as well, uh, including what they call the Weed Whacker, which is another trimmer for your ears and nose. And they have a variety of deodorants and sprays as well, which also keep you fresh and are terrific as well. So, certainly, Manscaped has a lot to offer. And we certainly highly recommend all of their products. So check out manscaped.com and use promo code TSH for 20% off and free shipping. So thanks very much for watching that promotional video for Manscaped. I do greatly appreciate it. Uh, great support from that sponsor and others that we've been working with. So certainly appreciate that as well as all the great supporters from all the great subscribers, viewers, the new channel members. The super thanks we've been getting have been phenomenal. So thank you again for all your support. It's very much appreciated. Now, on to the trade rumors for the day. Like I said, I just wanted to update on some of these players. We haven't really talked about too much in the last little bit. And there's still some, a little bit of news kind of in the background here on some of these guys. But uh, here, let's start with the latest on Evgeny Kuznetsov with the Washington Capitals. I mean, his name has been out there 
for some time. Um, the Washington Capitals are reportedly interested since quite you know before the end of the season even to shopping him to find a new home, get him a fresh start. Um, problem is he still has uh, you know four years left on that contract. A big cap it over seven million bucks. Twenty nine years old, um, and he's had his fair share of issues when it comes to COVID protocols. The last couple of years, he said he had a bit of a uh, an issue with the IOC when it comes to drug testing at the last international event he was at, which caused a ban from international competition for a while. Um, it just seems like he, he needs to get out of town, ideally, and just get a fresh start. They were kind of tired of all the off-ice stuff that comes with Kuznetsov. And, of course, his production hasn't been as good as the year they won the Stanley Cup. He really broke out that year, and especially in the playoffs, was a huge part of their Cup victory. And you could argue it was almost as deserving to win the Conn Smythe Trophy but ever since, it's been a bit of a downhill battle here. And it just, you know, a fresh start looked like it was needed. But because of all the off ice stuff and the contract, it's been a pretty difficult deal to do. And according to uh, what we've heard uh, from the uh, NHL insiders, it looks like GM Brian McClellan's just having a really hard time finding a fit. And at this point, it seems less likely that we're going to see a deal. Would not be shocking to see Kuznetsov uh, end up in training camp and competing with the Capitals again this season. But I still think, regardless of how things start, that they'll still look to explore that again when they can. But their window is kind of closing here. If they don't get something done soon, it's going to be difficult to do throughout the season because teams don't have as much cap flexibility. But one team that I was looking at that I think would make a lot of sense, and the other thing I think also impacting the Kuznetsov situation is the fact that the Jack Eichel trade is still held up too. Now, we're not going to talk anything specifically about Eichel here today, but given the fact that he's a top center iceman, uh, younger, more expensive, uh, you know, more attractive in a lot of ways, and that deal has not taken place, there's still a lot of teams that are interested. And even though we've heard teams have been in and out and whatever, they're, they're still at the end of the day. If they could do an Eichel deal, they'll do that before they do a Kuznetsov deal anytime, right? So there is some teams I think would have been, and to a degree, were somewhat interested in Kuznetsov, but we're holding back, trying to see if they could find something better like, like an Eichel deal. Now, one team that's in that mix that I think could circle back here would be the Anaheim Ducks. I mean, the Ducks have been a team that been rumored to want to add another center. They kept Ryan Getzloff on a one-year deal. So he's going to be there for one more season anyways. If they're falling out of favor like they're expected, maybe he gets dealt in the deadline, go chase a cup somewhere else. We'll have to see how that goes. But when it comes to Kuznetsov, uh, one thing that the Capitals could do if they want it, but it may not be the exact return they're looking for, is to bring back Adam Henrique going the other way. I mean, Henrique's not going to give you quite, at least in theory, the production that you're going to get from Kuznetsov. But you know what? Based on Kuznetsov's more recent play, you know what? Maybe it would work. I mean, uh, Kenrick's a little bit older, but yet a little bit cheaper. One year less than the term. If I know the Ducks were very interested in the beginning of the offseason, moving that contract too. And it could be a situation where both teams could help each other out. I don't necessarily think that would be a one-for-one -one deal. Uh, but given the need of each side and motivation to why they'd want to do it, I could see maybe something being worked out there. Now, the, the Ducks also have some other players that could possibly be moved. And we're looking at guys with a down to one year left on their deal, like a Josh Manson, a Hampus, a Hampus Lindholm, like a Ricard Raquel. So there could be other pieces mixed in, and maybe Kuznetsov's not the only guy uh, going the other way too. Now, it could be something like that could even happen early in season. But again, you're going to have to have you know equal amounts of money or close to it going in and out because teams just don't have as much flexibility. But the Ducks do have more flexibility than a lot of teams when it comes to taking on money. They could handle that Kuznetsov contract. Maybe they ask Washington to retain just a little bit uh, so that they can offset part of what they're going to go up here after getting rid of Henrik's money. That's just a possibility. Like they, they have a lot of other things they could include in the deal to make a bigger package here and see if they can work it out. So that, that's just a theory on my part. But we know that there are players that are still wanting to be moved. It's just a small market for it. Not a lot of opportunity, so it hasn't happened yet. But I still think they would consider it if the – a deal like that that they wanted to do can, comes along. It's just a little bit less likely going to happen. Now, when it comes to Christian Dvorak in Arizona, he's still generating a, a lot of buzz. And I, again, because he's a center, I still think there's some teams that would like to be interested uh, in an Eichel deal that are also interested in him. But to me, Dvorak's going to give you way more value. So I would not be shocked if a deal for Dvorak did happen sooner than later ahead of training camp. Um, but the main teams that are still reportedly interested are Boston and San Jose. 
Um, San Jose has their own share of issues. Now, I, I don't know if they could pull it off, um, but we know San Jose really desperately wants the movie Vander Kane, but there's a lot of things there that are – making things not want to be interested. I mean, he comes with so much off-ice baggage. He's currently being investigated now by the NHL for accusations made by his soon-to-be ex-wife about gambling and gambling on NHL games and games that he's been in, working with bookies to throw games. And it's a pretty, you know, extensive, very elaborate uh, accusation. And if it's proven to be true, he's going to, he's, they're not going to have to worry about that contract because he's going to get himself banned and suspended probably for life. But if that can't be proven, regardless if it's true or not, because sometimes things do happen, it's just covered up well, um, and I don't know what the status is. I can't say if he's guilty or not, but, um, you know, they may not be too worried about a trade. So, But we know if they could move him, they would. So it's, it seems like right now Arizona is a place where contracts go to die. So maybe if they throw in something else to entice them, I don't know what that, they could give the Coyotes to make it interesting. I mean, the Sharks aren't exactly the deepest when it comes to prospects and uh, things like that. But, you know, and they don't really have really a ton they should be giving away because of where things are standing with their franchise. So I don't know. Just a, just a quick theory. I, I don't really know for sure that that would happen. I can't say with any certainty it would. But we just know that the Sharks and the Bruins seem to be the most interested in Dvorak. Um, but I also think on Boston's front, I wouldn't be shocked if they go into the season with what they have and maybe make a move later if it's not working well enough. And obviously Jake DeBrusque would probably be the main piece there. But they'd want to move it. I'm just not sure that Arizona wanted DeBrusque. I think they wanted something more, even though he's still relatively young and a good, you know, potential good piece for the future, I think they would prefer somebody even younger or a first-round pick or, you know, something else that's going to give them more future asset but less, you know, dollars than right now. So we'll see how... How that goes because they've taken on a lot of cap space uh, with what they've already done for deals. Now the other player that's still out there is Tarasenko uh, in St. Louis. Uh, many feel that there's pretty well no chance that he can go to training camp with St. Louis. That relationship's pretty rough and broken. Um, and there's some that really wonder if Lou Lamarillo with the Islanders and Doug Armstrong in St. Louis are kind of playing a game of chicken, seeing who's going to blink first. We still don't have any real news on the secretive New York Islanders which, like I've said before, is not shocking knowing how Lou Lamarillo likes to operate. But we're now August the 13th, and we still don't know about Casey Zizekis. We don't know about Kyle Palmieri. Uh, you know, like, what is going on with the Islanders? And, and I think Friedman was on to something a couple of weeks ago when he said that he felt Lou was working on a significant trade and just doesn't want things to be official so that people don't know really where he's at, trying to leverage everything. And he's willing to wait this out, which... You know, we, we've seen it before from him, right? So we shouldn't be surprised. But at the same time, it's, you know, as a fan, it's a little frustrating to not know. But at the same time, I think there's a good chance that they are working on it. But it may not be Tara Single with the others. Like I said before, it could be a defenseman. It could be one of either each because they really do need an extra scorer, but they could use somebody to replace Nick Letty too. So I, and I don't really see them being able to pull off both. So it's going to likely have to be one or the other. I mean, I know Josh Bailey was a name that was maybe mentioned as a trade piece. If they do it, um, I don't know. And then there were some that said that there was concern over Tarasenko's shoulders, but I, I'm not. We can't say that with certainty either. But I know besides uh, the Islanders, the Devils and the Hurricanes were the last teams that I've seen linked to Tarasenko that seem to be still somewhat interested. Of course, assuming the right deal could be worked out. So we'll see. But there's still some big names and some blockbuster deals that could happen. Uh, we're kind of in that almost until the dog days of the offseason here where things are kind of slowing down. So it may not be just yet, but I think some of these things might happen closer to training camp because that's kind of like your next pressure point, right? Some of these teams don't want these players to end up in training camp because of the uh, relationship and the distraction and everything like that. So as we get closer to that, that's when, like I said, there's going to be a little bit more pressure applied and we might see GMs being a little bit more aggressive to get something done. So it wouldn't be shocking if the next – you know, two, three weeks, there's really not, uh, there could be lots of speculation, but as far as actual activity, there, there may not be much. I mean, there's going to be some more signings. There's still a lot of RFA business to be done, but when it comes to actual trades, it could be quiet for a couple of weeks here until we get something more substantial when the pressure point starts to hit. So let me know your thoughts on everything we discussed here tonight down in the comments, and we'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all of this news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.